Today, we're going to take a look at Power BI's upgraded mobile layout view functionality and cover some best practices for working in mobile layout view. Now, mobile BI dashboards are really important. You, you can stay on top of data analytics from really anywhere, but you're not going to want an overly complicated dashboard for mobile. So today, we're going to cover how to use mobile layout view in Power BI, working with text in Power BI mobile layout view, visual sizing, you know, how we choose the best visualization options for mobile, but also how we increase the amount of space we have to work with, and then some additional optimization tactics that we recommend for mobile dashboards. Here we are in Power BI. But today we're going to be taking a look at Numero's sales dashboard template, as well as our mobile version of this template. But before we get into mobile layout view, we want to make sure our settings are configured correctly. So I'm going to come up to File, Options and Settings, navigate into Options, and then within the Preview Features settings, ensure the Modify Visual Settings for Mobile Layout box is checked. And then in the top-hand navigation bar, when we look at View, we will actually see this option for Mobile Layout, and we can click right into Mobile Layout, and we can see that phone emulator be created for us to start a mobile canvas or a mobile version of this dashboard. One of the more exciting feature updates in Power BI is that we can now make edits to this dashboard in mobile layout view without impacting the web or desktop version of the dashboard. So as you can see here, select a visual on the canvas to start formatting. Your changes will only appear in the mobile layout. And this is new functionality. It's very exciting because we can go ahead and start creating the mobile version of this dashboard. I'm gonna go ahead and just drag this card over a big metric, 7.1 million. And then to get back into desktop layout, all you do is click on mobile layout again. And this will show, this is still maintaining our desktop version of that dashboard. The $7.1 million metric is still in the top left corner of this dashboard. And the changes that we made in mobile are just respected on mobile. It doesn't have any impact on the web version, which is very exciting, an awesome feature update. Now here I'm actually looking at the mobile template version of Numero sales dashboard. And the great thing about Numero's mobile templates is that while we're looking at the desktop view of this, when we click into mobile layout, this is automatically going to resize and look great on a mobile device. So we can see those metrics reformat to fit on this phone emulator. But typically what you'll see when you're moving a dashboard from desktop view into mobile view is likely some issues with text sizing. You know, you might have lengthy report titles or large text being used on the desktop version. There's no reason why you wouldn't. Um, but we recommend kind of ensuring that the size of your text is reduced on mobile. And if you're still having a hard time fitting everything on the mobile device, we could also use abbreviations. As you can see in Numero's template here, we are using AV instead of average. And, you know, you could potentially also use acronyms where they make sense. For example, if you were looking at a metric of average daily value. You could use the acronym ADV rather than spelling that out fully, but we really want to maximize space on mobile and minimize the amount of text or the length of text as well as the size of text. The biggest thing with the mobile dashboard is that we're working with reduced real estate. So we really want to focus on visualization types that tell a story very quickly and succinctly, allowing the user to get some information really in a glance. And so what we do recommend is focusing that dashboard to have two to four key metrics at the top of the dashboard and for those to be single value metrics that tell a story very quickly. As far as other visualization options, we do recommend choosing a visualization type like a pie chart or a bar chart that really is visually appealing to the eye and helps the user deduce 
figures very quickly. A data table is probably not the best option for a mobile dashboard. One, because you'd have to really reduce the amount of columns in that data table to ensure it fits on the mobile device. But two, there's just a lot of information in a data table that can be hard to derive valuable insights from immediately. So we really wanna focus on visualizations that are simple, clearly highlight with some color differentials what's going on and tell that story as simple and quickly as possible for our user. We also really like to focus on reducing the number of filters that are available in a mobile dashboard. This has seven that fit pretty clearly across the top, but even less could be beneficial for your dashboard depending on what your users need to do. Ask yourself what's essential to be filtered on and can we simplify in any way for mobile versus maybe a more comprehensive set of filter options in the web dashboard. We also recommend prioritizing horizontal orientations versus vertical ones when we're in mobile layout view. So what that means is we're seeing here with these filters, these are um, listed across the page in a horizontal orientation versus being stacked vertically. And there's not necessarily anything wrong with filters being stacked vertically. It's just when we're in the mobile device, we want to reduce the amount of scrolling that our end user has to do before they actually get to that data. Because again, we want to tell a story very quickly. We want to prioritize visualizations that are going to showcase well, show some key figures to our end user without them having to do a ton of scrolling. We have limited space, so let's maximize it. And again, this is really easy to change the orientation. You'll just click into a particular visualization or your filters and come over to their general settings and make sure that has a horizontal orientation if it is defaulting to a vertical when you first get into mobile layout view. Now, if you're really pressed for space, another trick to consider might be removing an axis from a report. For example, here we have this bar chart. Our x-axis is showing millions of dollars, but potentially we could add these as data labels themselves on each bar to show the actual figure that this bar is showcasing and remove the x-axis entirely. You know, in this scenario, it may not free up the most space, but it would save us a little bit of room on the page. And you might have a report where an access label really isn't doing much to help explain what's happening. It's pretty intuitive on its own. And removing that access could create more space and, and make this mobile dashboard a little bit easier to navigate. And then just from a design perspective, you've likely moved a lot of your metrics around, resized many things. It's really a good idea to check on the properties of an individual metric and ensure that you have consistent heights and widths between all of those. And you're not in a position where, you know, one metric is a little bit smaller than another one, or it looks to your eye that you've resized it appropriately, but it's a little bit off from the rest of the numbers on the page. Just good design to, to check in and make sure that you have consistent sizing between all of these metrics. That's it for today's tutorial, but we hope that you found these tips useful and that you'll leverage them when working in mobile layout view moving forward. Now, if you're looking for a pre-built template like the one we've been working off of today, check out the Numero Toolkit. It not only includes templates for mobile and web, but also includes themes, visualizations, paginated reports. It's a really great resource and you should check it out if you haven't. Otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in and we hope you enjoyed the tips.